welcome back to an episode of the complete Liverpool playthrough with me, Dodds Benji FM. Now, today, West Bromwich Albion will be coming up later on, but this, first of all, is the end of the transfer window. Hopefully, we won't be here for too long, uh, but we've obviously been trying to make a few moves, haven't we? Left, right, and centre. Pastore uh, has been, has been a, so, 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 I was a subject to bids, but he hasn't really. Um, he rejected the, the bids from Inter Milan, so we still need to try and shift him on. We're going to have transfer deadline day in the January to see if anything can occur. We're also trying to uh, obviously move on Roberto Firmino. If you remember last episode, if you saw last episode, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The question is, if on transfer deadline day, we'll get some offers in uh, and whether then we have to go out and spend some money to maybe bring in a replacement for those players. I don't necessarily think it's a guarantee, so it's quite a good read that we've got the game against West Brom coming up to at least keep this, this, interesting, this episode interesting even. Um, transfer deadline day, we will take part, we'll, we'll get involved, we'll see what is occurring within it. Um, apparently with the news that G uh, Giorgini Wijnaldum's handed in a transfer request. Did he actually hand in officially? Is he transfer listed? He is, and nobody wanted him. Uh, he's valued at 19 million, we'll offer him up for 20 and see if he gets moved on. We'll do the similar thing with Pastoria, of course, who we're trying to move on. Again, we tried him in that deeper role last episode, and he actually did quite well, but we'll, we'll offer him out for 17, see if anyone who can offer the right amount of money comes in, as uh, Shiojo is off to Cardiff on loan, just don't really have space for him this season. And no bids for Pastoria, though Southampton again are interested, and Markovic is the other one. Uh, a similar story with him as well. I'm kind of hoping that at some point, someone maybe comes in for these players to move them on. In our under-23s, I don't think there's anybody else really that is, uh, that is worth any money that we can move on is there apart from Pastoria. I mean, we've got Andy Carroll here who does very little. Um, I guess maybe there'd be an option to move him on as well because we just simply don't and won't play him. Um, again, not one of my best transfers ever, but he's on 60 grand a week. We will offer him out actually for his value and just see if he wants to go. I don't suspect he will. Uh, we'll spend a bit of money for Markovic. I mean, we're, we're not going to get any more money for him, so we may as well let him go for that fee. And uh, he's not been playing at all this season, so whatever, right? It's, it's about £5 million for him. Make an overall loss on the player, though, uh, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, and Burnley now want Andy Carroll on loan. Um, if I could make that like a put, like they have to... But, but hang on, well, this is a bit daft, really, because it's not going to matter too much. Um, I just literally just took that out and put it back in again. What I was going to do is put the other clause in, but we'll just put that one in uh, and see what they say. Maybe they'll fancy it. Carroll, loan move to Burnley, done. Ease off as well then. As uh, the window is continuing on, and so far we've <laughs> rid of two players in the space of what feels like two minutes. Now Golan's rejected a new contract from us. Well, there you are then. Like, what, what more can I do for you, uh, Nangolan? I mean, I've offered you the deal. You've rejected the deal. You've got three years after new contract or two years after new contract. See it out. You know, do, be, be do the right thing. You know, be sensible. And, uh, and there we are. What, what more is there to be said? Arsenal have gone for Adrian Silva. Decent little signing. Of course, he's gone to uh, Leicester in real life, hasn't he? Or has he? That's like, I don't know if it, that transfer was actually confirmed. There's some complications with it. I think it was 14 seconds late. Just let him have him. 14 seconds. If, imagine, oh, dearie me. That sort of stuff annoys me when they've been so pinicky over it. And it's 14 seconds. Uh, the transfer window, I've just noticed there, as I was continuing through, it's closed. Right. Well... Hmm. Okay, well, there we are. Let's get rid of Carol. Let's get rid of Ojo. And all of a sudden, our squad is thinned down a little bit, and probably for the better as well. Uh, we didn't need either of those two players. And let's face it, with the way the season, the season has been going, recent form as such, we haven't really needed to bring anybody else in. I think our, our team overall is really well balanced, so I guess we'll just see. Uh, what we can achieve against West Brom today. We've also got a registered Champions League squad. Um, but again, West Brom and then West Ham coming up. Of course, I mean, some revenge over West Ham after what happened at London Stadium when it all got a little bit embarrassing, if you might remember, uh, earlier on this season. It was quite a while ago now, but you may well recall, just to refresh your memory, it'll be next episode. Um, but they beat us... Where is it? Why am I so confused? It wasn't last season, was it, I'm thinking of? No, there it is, 6-1. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, tried, I've been spending a long time trying to forget about it, and now I'm bringing it up in front of all my pals. So, oh, just, just that, I just, I could feel that sort of overwhelming sense of you were so bad, and I don't know, I don't know how to go over it. Anyway, this game against West Brom, uh, it should be on the horizon, of course, at the end of transfer windows. Generally speaking, it takes a little bit longer. Uh, to progress through some of the days, as we now have to register some players for the last stages. Now, Gruich can't be registered, and neither can Pastore. Um, these are the 21 guys. Do I actually have to register? Okay, well, it doesn't make a difference, because you have to leave the spaces if, if you're not going to register them. Um, I don't think we could switch anybody out for these guys either. If we're completely lost, is there anyone I'd switch out for these two guys? 
probably not looking at it, so we'll just keep it as is, really. We've got three keepers, which I think you have to have anyway. So there we go, then. No changes to the Champions League squad. No transfers brought in. I mean, in some respects, a little bit underwhelming. But this game against West Brom, I can sense it is going to be a 13-goal thriller. Um, I'm thinking 10-3 victory for us. Just putting it out there now. Uh, when Alam's not happy that he's not left, but Jorginho, mate, if no one comes in for you, I'm not going to sell you for a cut price deal. We might as well keep you around because you're a decent midfielder. If we get an injury crisis, he's going to be the sort of player we really need. Now, this was the formation we played last time out. It was the cup game against Chelsea. We went at 2-0, played a fully rotated side. The question is, against West Brom, do we want to do a similar thing? Or do we want to switch back to the diamond? Or do it? Or is it time to pull out? Is it time to pull this out? Is it time to pull this out? I'm not sure. We obviously had it at the very start of the series. We've watched episode one, series one. This was the plan, to play this system. I'm tempted to give it a go. We train it, so we should be natural in it. We're going to give it a go. I've used it in previous football managers to lots of success. This football manager, not so much. Uh, it's a little bit like the foot. Like, the reason I'm playing it is right. It's not too dissimilar from the 4 3 3. You're basically just playing a grow and De Bruyne floating in those areas where, rather than playing one in behind the other. Um, so let's just see then. It's the 4 2 4. Formation Man has returned. They're playing a 4 4 2 because it's Tony Pulis and West Brom and hashtag WBA. Uh, let's see then. I have faith in you to go out there and get a result. Everyone seems happy. No strikers to deal with. So that's always good as well because they're a pain in the. The thirst, as uh, me and I, think, I assume it's Tony Pulis on that side. I can't actually click to see if it is or not. But let's assume so. As uh, we're about to kick things off, let's just skip this and get into it, shall we? In three dimensions, it's West Brom shooting from left to right. It's us shooting from right to left. And uh, the first action of the game is to see how much chest it down. Now, at the top of the table, as you can see in that top corner, it's very, very tight uh, between ourselves, Arsenal, Chelsea, maybe even Newcastle, Spurs in that mix as well. And it's really a chase is on now. To in the second half of the season, can we catch Manchester United? That's going to be the real question mark over the uh, the rest of this year. As Cater finds De Bruyne, if he can slide it through to Agüero, he does. There's a man in the middle. If he can find him, Agüero pulls it back, and he finds the man in the middle, Jordan Henderson, waiting for the pass and gets the goal as well. One nil, great start. Ten minutes gone, we take an early lead. Lovely old job. We don't need to watch it again. Although the move was very nice, Agüero, we will watch it again. I've changed my mind. Agüero slots it back. And uh, Jordan Henderson on hand just to poke it home. That's what you like to see from your midfielders running through, scoring goals. Now, uh, it's 1-0. It's, it's going well. No need to change a thing. But uh, what I am interested to see is how many passes we have in this game, maybe comparably to the other side. As the ball comes out to this, uh, out to the edge, in fact. Mane's a bit more central than normal. Inside to De Bruyne. Back heel into Jordan Henderson for two. Oh, Foster with a good save. Ben Foster in the West Brom goal, palming it to his left-hand side and forcing a corner kick. A corner kick that Jordan Henderson will take as he uh, plays it into the middle. Quite lofted, actually, uh, towards Van Dijk, but it is headed away. Cater back on it. Back out to Henderson. What's the delivery going to be like? It's good! And it's to Mane who hits the side netting. Very good opportunity for us. Quite nicely worked as well. And uh, now all of a sudden the time is racing down. And we move up to second in the league table. Spurs must be faltering elsewhere. Uh, we're still a good nine points behind Man United. And we need them to lose some games. Go on a little run of tricky form. If we're going to catch them as the uh, ball's played forward here. And West Brom maybe with a chance. Pulled back. Henderson sort of gets it clear. Forced a run done. And is it... Who's that? A day? I think that's how you say it. With a goal. And 1-1. Um, one, one. It's a bit scrappy. Let's face it. It's not the best football from us. And... I don't know, really. There's one challenge comes in. Henderson's clearance is appalling. Sacco kicks it against his own hands, I think. And it's put in the back of the net. I've just realised that Sacco's playing. Hmm. No. Joel Matip should be playing. Right. Well, at half-time, we're going to make a change. Joel Matip comes in. And Van Dijk and Matip are going to swap places. I, I quick pick the side in this new system. I just thought it will pick my regular back four. How wrong was I? Well, I feel I'm going to be honest completely here, viewers. I feel like a bloody fool. Um, Mohamed Usaka, those cost to me big time. And I, again, I a similar sadness to that uh, result against West Ham as Mane nearly gets away from his defender, but Tierney knocks it back. And uh, West Brom looked to clear, although the clearance isn't the best. And this is the first highlight after half time, which ordinarily means it'll come to nothing. Are we being conned here by the game? Or actually, is there going to be a chance in our favour? As the ball's played through, Mane in behind. He's got a grow in the middle if he can find him. Stands on the ball. It's cleared. And I suspect. I suspected that was going to be that, but maybe not. Klein recycles it again into Emre Shan. 
finds Jordan Henderson into the Bruyne. Aguero with some space. And, oh, Aguero. Oh, he gets very lucky. Very fortunate. Ben Foster unlucky, really. Makes the first save. I think it cannons off Ben Mee in the centre. And then Sergio Aguero, number 10. Slots home. Easy as you like. And Liverpool are back in the league. You can see this is quite unfortunate from Ben Foster, to be fair. Saves the ball. I mean, in fairness, actually, any goalkeepers will know. You don't parry it out in front of you. You get it wide. You get it out, out of the area. But he's... um. He's paid for that. That's our little sympathy. Uh, 2-1 then. And back in the lead. I, I suspect now that we'll go on and maybe score another one. As Klein intercepts Mane. Looks for a big switch towards Keita. And now Aguero holds it up a little bit. Plays it to the left-hand side. Williams with the overlap. Of course, we're playing inside forwards. Keita and Mane, both of which are playing slightly more inside. As De Bruyne finds Mane, they're on this right-hand side now. If he can pull it back, he does. Keita's there. Ben Foster, yeah, with a decent save. I'm having quite a good game, Ben Foster. All things considered, I know we're taking the lead here, but he's, uh, he's making a few saves left and right. He's not doing too badly. Hard to criticise him, really. We've got a few players on yellow cards that I'm a bit concerned about. Henderson is one of those as he whips in a free kick. Van Dijk, Matip's there, heads it down. And um, West Brom clumsily uh, try and get this away. But that is a, well, that was a baffling clearance. Anyway, throwing deep in that half, 65 minutes gone. And De Bruyne is... Well tackled by Fletcher. I think that's probably fair enough. And uh, now West Brom have got a, a big job to do here if they're going to work it from these deeper areas. They're passing it around very casually. And the clearance is not the best. But Matip's touch was questionable. Henderson into Agro. De Bruyne now shot on goal. This formation works quite nicely. Agro and De Bruyne almost playing. They're not almost. The thing is, right, because of the positions, they're not playing like a strike partnership. They're playing like two creative midfielders. And when you've got players as good as these two, then you've always got a chance at doing something as uh, the ball is just in the air here. You can tell Tony Pudis is in town, can't you? Blimey. And Roshan, back into De Bruyne, plays it out to Borda Keita, who escapes his marker and prods home. 3-1, 66 minutes on the clock. A greatly, moved, or a greatly worked goal from De Bruyne. I mean, the pass here is exceptional. We'll look at it again in three dimensions. This is a good angle for it. You can see the run. They try and step up. Foolish, really. The ball, the ball from De Bruyne is expert. And Keita with the goal. Him and Mane might score a lot of goals in this sort of system. And, of course, Salah when he comes back in too. Um, so far, so good. Emre Shan is struggling for a little bit of fitness. I think that might be the change you make. And Golan can come on for him. And uh, we'll just keep things as are. Well. John Henderson, interestingly, plays an automatic in this system. Uh, he could equally play as a box-to-box -box midfielder, but the automatic role seems to have done him quite well today. And because we're playing attacking, he'll be pressing forward a lot more than normal as uh, the time nearly ticks down. There's about two minutes remaining of the match. Uh, Manchester United beating Brighton 3-0. And it looks as if Spurs got their act together as well. They have now taken a lead and keep that. Well, do you know what? They, they make the gap to Manchester United a little bit smaller. They've got it at obviously seven points. We've got it at nine points. If both of us beat Manchester United, then all of a sudden they're pulled in. But we need that to happen at some point this season. And uh, with Champions League games coming up soon as well, that is going to make things interesting. As the game wraps up, then 3-1 winners in this one. And a uh, good performance all round. A nine-point rating for De Bruyne, an 8.7 for Aguero in this new system, the system that we tried to start the save with. And it worked really, really well. Formation Man does it again as Fabio Bruyne needs close to trigger, triggering a clause. Uh, you can see that in a 3-1 for us, 4-3. Uh, Spurs beat Manchester City in a very back and forth game. Chelsea beat Bournemouth as well. Arsenal beat Sunderland. So those two guys stay, but well, those two teams stay right behind us. And uh, still some work to do. Next episode, then, will be that game against uh, West Ham United. And then following that, Chelsea uh, will then have the first of our Champions League knockout stage games with a game probably against Swansea thrown in there as well. So if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. If you want to see some more, subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate people still sticking with the series. I know it's not for everyone, but if you are someone that keeps watching, do let me know. Tell me what you like about it. Maybe we'll do this again for FM 18 I don't know let me know uh, with love with care goodbye